Oh no, it's another video about compliments. <laughs> Yes, yes it is. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about five of my most compliment pulling fragrances of the year so far. This is not scientific. I did not go through each fragrance that I've worn every day of the year with like a huge spreadsheet and go, today, two compliments. The next day, no compliments. <laughs> One compliment the next day and just, keep up a spreadsheet or something. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. That's just, that's overkill. So this is just kind of going off memory of compliments I received this year. It's good enough for me. Hopefully it's good enough for you. Let's jump into it. Before I jump into this video, gotta hit you guys with the usual information as it pertains to compliments and fragrances. Okay. Most of the time when you get a compliment, it will be from someone you know. It's gonna be from a friend, family member, coworker, an acquaintance, whatever. Typically, that's where you're gonna get compliments. It's not super common at all for you to get lots of compliments from people that you do not know whatsoever if you're just walking you know, through a store or, or shopping or something like that. Does it happen? Sometimes not all that often so keep that in mind if you're if you're thinking to yourself man i never get compliments could be a lot of reasons maybe your personality not so great maybe you don't look very approachable maybe you're not at the right place at the right time lots of different things there will be people out there who go oh, i get a compliment every single time i wear a fragrance ever and you'll get other people that say compliments don't exist the truth is somewhere between so keep that in mind you know, compliments and, and receiving them depends on a whole mess of different things. Let's go ahead and kick this off with Aqua de Jo Profundo from Giorgio Armani. Now I kind of missed the whole Aqua de Jo Profumo train. Profumo came out, got massive hype. People still love it. People still wear it like crazy. That one, for whatever reason, just didn't key into my brain or something. You know, I smelled it and I thought, yeah, 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 that's, that's good, that's fine, that's good. But I didn't wear it a lot, and uh, other people did, obviously. But then Profundo came out, and even though I think in general, the community seems to prefer Profumo over Profundo, this one works better for me. And so I've worn this a good amount. It's got your sea notes and citrus that you would expect from Aqua de Jo. There's also mineral notes in here, cypress and rosemary. So it's got a modernized kind of green take or a green nuance to that Aqua de Jo DNA. It works fantastically, super versatile. My wife absolutely friggin' loves it. And I've gotten numerous compliments wearing this fragrance. Again, mainly from people I know. And no, not my mom. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But do compliments from your mom really count? Probably not. Aqua de Jo Profundo though, absolutely love this stuff. My favorite Aqua de Jo as of right now, I wear the heck out of it. Next up, Ferragamo Womo Signature. Yeah, this one kicking it back to uh, earlier this year during the winter months. Price on this unfortunately has been going up at discounters. That's kind of a bummer, but what are you gonna do? Fragrance is still worth it, even at $50, $60. Though it was a, a much better buy when it was down around 30, am I right? Yeah. Tonka, leather, cinnamon, coffee, and cardamom, some of the notes in this fragrance. So you're gonna get a really nice, sweet, warm, coffee-centric scent that absolutely kills it in cool weather. Coffee seems to be a note that's a little love it or hate it. You know, some people just don't gravitate toward it at all. Frankly, I love this stuff. And when you mix it with so many other warm spices like this fragrance does, it absolutely kills. It slays in terms of compliments. And the original Salvatore Ferragamo Womo is also very good as far as compliments go, but I think Signature is a little bit better, richer, deeper, darker, you know, you know, you know. Now this next one might seem a little bit of surprise to you or a little bit out of place when you compare it to some of these other fragrances. And this one actually surprised me as far as how much positive attention it can pull you. And it's one that my wife again adores. So it makes it a lot easier for me to wear this on a day-to-day -day basis when I know the person I'm gonna be around the most 
really digs it. It is Interlude Black Iris from Amouage. And again, this is kicking it back to earlier this year during the winter. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I love this fragrance. I love it. It could possibly be one of my top 10 favorite fragrances ever. Now, I'm not gonna put that in stone. Can't say that with absolute certainty, but especially if we're talking about, you know, only fragrances that are in production right now, if we remove all the discontinued ones that I love, yeah, top 10. Actually, I, I think pretty easily if we remove the discontinued ones. This one has leather, oud, olibanum, and myrrh, along with, of course, the black iris that is in the name of the fragrance. When this was first announced, I wasn't really sure about it. Amouage doing a flanker, one of their most popular releases. Yeah, don't know about that. Sounds like Amouage might be jumping the shark. At least that's what I thought at the time. The idea of them taking the blue beast and then just inserting some iris into it seemed like a cash grab, frankly. But then I smelled it and holy crap, it is awesome. Yes, there will still be people out there that prefer the original interlude over this one, but I think this one takes interlude to the next level as much as it possibly could anyway, because interlude was already awesome. But this takes interlude and makes it wearable. It makes it smoother. It tones down the harshness of the opening. It gives a little bit of just a little touch of this sweetness from that iris. It just smells fantastic. I love this stuff. I wore it a solid amount and it is a surprisingly great, versatile, people-pleasing scent, so long as you don't go crazy heavy. Next one, not too much of a surprise. Maybe uh, a little bit of a, of a boring fragrance to some people, but if we're talking just straight up versatility and maximum compliment factor, maximum power, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Now for a long time, I've said that Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette is my favorite Dior Sauvage, but I wore a whole bunch of the Eau de Parfum as I was getting ready to review it. And while I was wearing it, I got a lot of positive feedback, which is not really a surprise, is it? Nah, it's, it's Sauvage. And another thing about Dior Sauvage, I, I just went on vacation, well, a couple weeks ago, down to Florida. While I was down there, I was mingling with a whole bunch of crowds, a lot of people down there, and uh, I smelled a lot of fragrances, a whole, whole lot of fragrances and some other bad smells of people that should have had fragrances or at least deodorant or a shower. Anyway, Sauvage in all of its iterations was the fragrance I smelled the most. So it is everywhere. It is extremely popular. It's not going to be the type of fragrance that makes you stand out like a, a unique butterfly or whatever. It's not gonna, it's not gonna give you that, you know, signature scent, this is me and nobody else kind of vibe. It can be your signature scent, absolutely. It's just not gonna be, you know, this is my signature scent. Nobody else smells like that. Nah. It's your signature scent and his and his and his and hers and his and hers and his and his and his also and his and 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 his back there. Everyone was wearing Dior Sauvage down there. Sure, I also smelled a little bit of Y, smelled some Blue de Chanel, you know, I smelled a, a smorgasbord of fragrances, popular releases. And I mentioned this in another video, I also smelled somebody that was wearing some heavy duty patchouli. Now that guy, that dude stuck out, okay? In a sea of Sauvage, that, that guy with the powerful patchouli, I was like, hey man, nice. <laughs> Anyways, a bit of a rambling rant there. I was just saying, Sauvage, it's everywhere. There's a reason. The reason is people love the stuff. The reactions that you get to Dior Sauvage nowadays is similar to the reactions that people were getting with the original Aqua de Joe when that came out, or CK1 when that came out, or Dracar Noir when that came out. They were just pulling insane reactions. People loved, loved those fragrances. And maybe you can smell them now and go, oh, who cares, it's played out. Well, guess what? When it came out, it was on fire everywhere. And that's how this is now. 
Bergamot, Sichuan pepper, Ambroxan, lavender, vanilla, some of the notes in this scent. It takes the Sauvage Eau de Toilette DNA, smooths it out a little bit, less aggressive in the opening, little more sweetness, boosting it up some. It smells great. Yes, there will absolutely always be people in the fragrance community who look down on Dior Sauvage. But what that does, what it sets out to do, which is to pull positive attention, to be versatile, and to have fantastic performance, it crushes, crushes at that. Now this last one is a new release and it's a pretty big surprise. I was fairly certain that this release would not really be that good, it would just be kind of forgettable and just, you know, who cares? It'll be gone in a year, that, that kind of thing. It's surprisingly really good, like really, really nice. If you're looking for versatility, compliments, all that stuff, man. Lanoui de Lome, Blue Electrique. Cardamom, ginger, lavender, bergamot, some of the notes in this fragrance. This one comes after Lanoui de Lome O Electrique, which uh, a lot of people weren't really sold on. And then Lome Le Parfum, which again, a lot of people weren't sold on, though I will say Lome Le Parfum, it grew on me a little bit over time. It still isn't really hyper unique. It, it borrows from the Y line from Yves Saint Laurent, but it's still, it's still passable. It's still good for a lot of guys. Now, this one, this is La Nuit de Lome made a little fresher, which is gonna harken back to the now discontinued La Nuit de Lome Frozen Cologne, which carries a, a pretty heavy premium price tag on eBay because of the discontinuation. So it harkens back to frozen cologne a little bit and at the same time takes the La Nuit de Lome DNA and modernizes it a little bit. So you end up with this La Nuit de Lome-esque fragrance that is made much better for daytime use during the spring, during the summer, but retains that sexiness from the cardamom from the original La Nuit de Lome that makes it usable during the evening or into fall as well. This is one of my best surprises of the year. Blue Electric, I did not think it was gonna be that good. It actually is, and people have loved this stuff when I've worn it. So La Nuit de Lone Blue Electric, if you are a fan of the La Nuit line, if you're a fan of fragrances that are made for hyper versatility, check this out. So there we go, five of my most complimented fragrances in no particular order of the year so far. Let me know in the comments below, what are some of the fragrances that you've been wearing this year if you're just looking to have something that's people pleasing, you know? One of those situations where you're going out and you just think to yourself, man, I just want something that smells nice that people are gonna like. What is it you reach for in that situation? All right, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.